<clears throat> I'm sorry, but I promise you I don't have COVID.
Hi, good morning, everyone. Uh, just I think you all know that we'll start in probably another five minutes. Uh, I know there was a little mix up this morning and yeah, email was sent out telling persons that the seminar is supposed to start at 10, when it's, when it's actually starting at 9.30. So um, the TTMA is currently correcting that. So we'll give persons another 10 minutes or so to join the link and then we'll, we'll begin.
Good morning once again, everyone. Um, welcome to today's seminar on investment incentives for the manufacturing sector in Trinidad and Tobago. I am the presenter of this morning's session. My name is Vidish Maharaj. I'm a senior economist at the Ministry of Trade and Industry. As I mentioned previously, we have over 100 persons registered for the seminar, but we've now crossed the 50 mark in terms of participants that would have actually logged on. So I'm going to start the, the session right now, right? But there may be quite a few persons that will join later on. Before I start, I want to go through just a couple of um, housekeeping rules, more or less, right? The, if you have questions throughout the session, right, you could post the questions in the chat directly to the panelists. I have someone from the Ministry of Trade and Industry um, on the link. That's Ms. Rishana Singh. She's an economist at the Ministry of Trade and Industry. And she, re she will reply to individual questions directly. And I will also allow a 10 minutes at the end of the session to take questions. So in posting your questions, I just want to ask that you kindly provide the name of the company that you are representing, as well as contact information for yourself in the event that we are unable to provide a response today, we could provide it thereafter. So just a, a little bit about myself. I'm a senior economist at the Ministry of Trade and Industry with responsibility for investments. I've been at the Ministry of Trade and Industry for over 14 years. I've been responsible for investment policy, development, formulation, and administration. I've also been heavily involved in the administration of investment incentives. I'm the lead negotiator for reciprocal investment promotion and protection agreements, and a member of Trinidad and Tobago double taxation team. Trinidad and Tobago currently has 12 reciprocal investment promotion and protection agreements, and the investment agreements allow for a level playing field for foreign investors, as well as investors in Trinidad and Tobago that, look, that are looking to invest abroad. We also have 17 double taxation treaty agreements, as I mentioned, and the double taxation agreement really ensures then that companies are not taxed in more than one jurisdiction once those, ingre once those agreements are in force. So to give a brief overview of this morning's presentation, I will start by listing the incentives that are available for manufacturing. I will provide some detail on what the benefits are, the eligibility criteria for accessing these benefits, so you would know as a company whether or not you qualify to access the benefits. And I'll also walk you through the application process. Now, the application process, I will speak to the, the, the usual time that it takes in the application process, as well as what are the key um, documents that are required when applying. I will also go through some of the tax allowances that are, that are available for manufacturers because there are quite a few tax allowances available under the Income Tax in either Industry Act as well as the Corporation Tax Act. I will also speak to some of the special programs that are provided for manufacturers from InvestTT, ExportTT, Bank, and ETEC. Now, there are quite a few other agencies that also provide services for manufacturers, but these are the main ones that have specific programs geared towards assisting manufacturers and assisting the manufacturing industry in Trinidad and Tobago. We will end by, by um, discussing the new measures that were announced in the 2021 fiscal package, the budget. As you all know, the budget was passed in the Senate on Tuesday, and there were quite a few measures that the Minister of Finance had announced on October 5th in the budget to assist the manufacturing sector. So I'll just briefly touch on some of those measures just to make sure that you're aware of what they are. So manufacturing incentives in Trinidad and Tobago really comes in two different forms. You have legislative incentives through various pieces of acts, as well as you have grant facilities which are administered by government policy. Right? Under the, um, the various pieces of legislation, you would have fiscal benefits under the Fiscal Incentive Act. You would have import duty concessions, which are administered under the Customs Act. You have the free trade zone status under the Trinidad and Tobago Free Zones Act. And with respect to grants, you have a research and development facility administered by Export TT, a co-financing program by Export TT, financing to meet the international standards, which is also administered by Export TT. At the Ministry of Trade and Industry, you have a grant fund facility and a steel plant manufacturing grant. So let's 
go into the details of these incentives now and provide some more information. Fiscal incentives are benefits granted to large-scale manufacturers and information communication technology companies under the provisions of the Fiscal Incentive Act. The benefits include exemptions from customs duty, value-added tax, and income tax on dividends or other distributions. Now, I must mention here that when you apply for benefits under the Fiscal Incentive Act, you are really required to be investing at least 50 million TT dollars. So this type of benefit is really for highly capital intensive companies. The eligibility criteria for accessing benefits under the Fiscal Incentive Act, you must reside in Trinidad and Tobago with the central management and control of your affairs situated in Trinidad and Tobago. You must be an enterprise producing approved products or services as indicated by not being on the list of products of the first schedule of the ARC. And the first schedule of the ARC outlines about 35 different industries that are not eligible for the grant of fiscal incentives. These industries include beer, cigarettes, alcohol, umbrellas, um, rum, and you know, there are, there are quite a few under the Fiscal Incentive Act. So that, that's available online, the list, the full schedule list. So I won't go into, I won't, I won't explain each industry, but they are basically industries that the government really do not seek, does not seek to encourage. And that's why that list is there. You must be declared an approved enterprise under section 212 of the Act, right? And you must be making a contribution to Trinidad and Tobago economy in terms of employment, linkages, and or investment. So item four here obviously is the, the most important um, item here that the Ministry of Trade and Industry will consider when evaluating an application for fiscal incentive. This is because we really look to, to, to the companies that uh, you know, employ a lot of persons, um, have linkages within the domestic economy in terms of sourcing your raw material, or providing an input into another industry in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, also your ability to generate foreign exchange and the size of your investment and the overall impact that it would have on the country itself. The, in applying for fiscal incentives, companies are required to apply electronically via TT BizLink. The documents that are required include the certificate of corporation, register certificate, memorandum and article of association, registered certificate of particular directors, a feasibility study slash business proposal. And the feasibility study is where the company will really provide all the details on the aspects of the company itself. That would include um, its marketing plan, its financing plan, its production in terms of how much it's gonna be producing. So the feasibility study will really give all the details on the business. You're also required to provide financial projections for five calendar years, as well as the, your necessary planning approvals. Now, like I said, companies can um, access, can apply, sorry, for this benefit on TT BizLink. And the website is www.ttbizlink, as spelled out there, ttbizlink.gov.tt, right? A physical incentive application usually takes approximately two months. The reason being is because when you apply and you submit the documents, an evaluation that needs to be done on the company's business proposal, the evaluation would include a site visit as well as a financial analysis of the project itself. That evaluation would then have to be sent to the cabinet, right, for approval. Once the cabinet approves, then a legal notice will be prepared by the Office of the Attorney General to give effect to the decision. So like I said, fiscal incentive usually takes about two months, and this is usually for highly capital intensive enterprises. Highly capital intensive plus are classified as companies that invest over 50 million TT dollars. The second type of benefit for manufacturing enterprises, and this is one that is widely used in the manufacturing sector, are import duty concessions. Import duty concessions are exemptions from custom duties on raw materials, machinery equipment, and in some cases, packaging material based on the provisions of the third schedule of the Customs Act. Now, the third schedule of the Customs Act identifies 89 different manufacturing type industries. 
Now I would have pulled out four from the um from the arc here. These are the first four listed, right? Um, like I said, so like I said, yeah, 89, these are the first four listed. Now item one, two, and three, you would see those industries qualify qualify for packaging. So you could, if you're doing food products, you could get packaging. If you're doing beverages, you could get packaging. If you're doing wax and wax products, you could get packaging. However, if you're doing soap, there's no packaging, right? So the provision is really different for each different type of industry, right? I'm just using this as an example, but even though you qualify for it, does not mean you are absolutely granted it. There is a requirement and it has been government policy since this legislation has been enacted that if there is a local manufacturer of the product, be it the raw material or the packaging material that you are, that you are seeking to source, that you're seeking to import, you must purchase locally or you must get um, a letter from that person indicating that they cannot meet the specifications that are required for the industry that you're, see, that you're seeking to, um, to build. The eligibility criteria for import duty concessions, you must be a manufacturing enterprise, as, as I said. You must make a contribution towards the and Tobago economy. And again, this is very important. Again, the employment, the linkages, the additional investment, your ability to export, your ability to generate foreign exchange, um, your ability to use local raw material, local inputs. You must have a positive local labor within and a positive local value added, right? Similar to the Physical Incentive Act, companies apply for import duty concessions through the e-application available on TTBizLink. The Ministry of Trade and Industry reviews the application. They do a site visit. Um, the evaluation report is prepared, which is then sent to the minister based on the provisions outlined in the act. Once the company is granted um, custom import duty concessions, that's the overarching approval. The next approval they would need to get is they would need to get the license from the trade license unit. The license from the trade license unit is automatic based upon the, based upon the application, right? Um, however, you still need to apply for the license. The license is done on an annual basis, whereas the import duty concessions, you do not need to, you do not need to apply for that on an annual basis. The process for import duty concession takes two weeks. Companies are required to have a bonded warehouse for storing all items that are brought in free of custom duty. Establishing a bonded warehouse can take a further two weeks. So once a company, that, and that is once a company has all the necessary approval. So basically, if you're now looking at import duty concessions, it could take you about a month to have it finalized, right? Um, the bonded warehouse part is under the remit of the Customs and Excise Division of the Ministry of Finance. And we normally urge applicants to engage Customs and Excise quite early on this to ensure that they meet the requirements. Customs and Excise ensures for the space that you're going to be storing, storing the raw materials that are import duty free, that you have town country planning approval, OSHA approval, as well as fire service approval. Moving ahead, Trinidad and Tobago currently has a free zones regime. And the free zones regime was established by the Trinidad and Tobago Free Zones Act in 1988. The legislation provides for tax exemption for manufacturing and services types industries. Currently in Trinidad, there are approximately 15 companies benefiting from free zone type arrangements. Of the 15, only four are manufacturing type enterprises. So it came as no surprise in 2017, when the government having assessed the entire free zone program, announced its intention to transition into a special economic zone regime. A special economic zone is a, de is a democratic demarcated geographic area contained within the country's national boundaries where the rules of business are different from those that prevail in the national territory. These differential rules principally deal with investment conditions, international trade and customs, taxation and the regulatory environment, whereby the zone is given a business environment that is intended to be more liberal from a policy perspective and more effective from an administrative perspective than that of the national territory. Now, the Minister of Finance in his budget, in, a, in the budget presentation on October 5th, um, spoke um, about the SEZ regime and it being a major um, initiative to drive the manufacturing sector, 
right? Um, he anticipated that the new regime would diversify the number and types of industries, and more importantly, locate these zones strategically in specific areas across the country. Um, the Minister further stated that the regime would attract new, dynamic, and sustained investment, which the previous free zone regime could not achieve. It is expected that the special economic zone regime may include targeted incentives, including generous indirect tax benefits, such as VAT and custom duties, as well as preferential rates of corporation tax in order to encourage investment in specific sectors. So this is something that we anticipate will be rolled out um, in the forthcoming year, the special economic zone. Now, currently, the Ministry of Trade and Industry on its website has a special economic zone policy that was approved by cabinet. And if one were to look at the policy and look at the, the, um, the areas more specific for special economic zone, you would realize that there are six different type of zones that are being proposed. Um, one is a free port, a free port is a duty-free area located at a port of entry where goods imported may be unloaded for warehousing, repackaging or processing. Um, the second is a free trade zone, which is similar to the free trade zone type regime, which is a duty-free area that accommodates specific activities targeted for international trade. Industrial parks, a purpose-built industrial estate that leverages domestic and foreign direct investment in value-added manufacturing industries. Specialized zones, a place designated for specialized activities. And it's no surprise that these were linked to the areas identified for diversification. And of course, the top area that was identified, the manufacturing sector. A development zone, development activities focus on developing a specific geographic region with emphasis on factors such as employment, skills, training, entrepreneurship, and rural development, and, and overall social and economic development of the area. A single enterprise zone restricted to one business entity engaged in any of the um, identified or any of the targeted industries for um, diversification of the economy. So as I mentioned, this is something that will be rolled out over the next fiscal year. The Minister of Finance did announce it in the budget debate. The Ministry of Trade and Industry does have a policy on special economic zones on its website. Um, and you can get further information by looking at the policy document for now. In terms of grant, grants that are available, Export TT currently administers a research and development facility. The research and development facility was revised in 2017, and it now provides funding for three phases. Phase one is funding to cover the technical and empirical market research and result in technical that result in a commercial feasibility report. Right? The report is to be used as evidence in the evaluation of any application for funding under phase two. And phase two is um, meeting the, it, it, it's associated with meeting the relevant um, costs related to the products or service development. The funding in phase two covers the prototype development and proof of concept, which cover both manufacturing and services. Phase two shall not exceed 50% of the total cost of the project up to a maximum of $750,000 within a maximum two year period. Applications for phase two are not exclusively phase one um, applicants. So phase one is 70% up to 100,000. Phase two is 50% up to 750,000. Um, you do not have to do the feasibility report with Expo TT in order to access phase two. Phase three, on the other hand, is actually the commercialization objective based on the results from phase one and two. Funding will be strictly based on the commercial potential of the product services, particularly in the export market, and will cover approved costs related to launching the product or process in the marketplace, which can include marketing, publicity, advertising, publication of sales literature, trade fairs, and product certification. The funding in this phase is limited to $150,000. Application to phase three shall be exclusively the phase two awardees. So what that means is that you cannot access phase three unless you would have done your product service development with the export TT. In terms of um, accessing the benefit, the export TT requires you, well, the, the RDF is open to sole proprietors, business partnerships and companies. 
the company must be an established business in Trinidad and Tobago in operation for at least one year, as evidenced by having, by having audited financial statements or bank statements. You, the company must be locally owned. It must be from the non-energy manufacturing and services sector. And it must show evidence of being able to, to cover the required client contribution or the percentage of the project. In terms of assessment, and this is available on Export TT's website, Export TT looks at the market research and strength of the market, including your competitor analysis, your data collection methods and market testing, the management and technical experience of the project team, local content, business competence, such as systems, procedures, and policies, and business sustainability, the impact of the project on the strategic direction of the business, the commercial viability, obviously, of the project, the degree of innovativeness, right? So it must be something new, something innovative, um, the impact on the local economy, the export and the export potential. Now, these are all very important. And like I said, it's listed, it's available on Export TT's website. Now, since the recapitalization of, um, of the RDF, which took place in October 2017, the research and development fund has dispersed approximately $2 million to six firms, right? These firms were involved in agro-processing, food and beverage, manufacturing, ICT, education, and, and the creative sector. So it says our facility that has been working and export TT has been pushing it um, quite a lot in terms of building the export capability of domestic firms. Another facility that was launched in 2017 is the Grand Fund facility. The Grand Fund facility established by the government provides opportunities to develop small and medium-sized enterprises that are involved in the production of high value products and services that can compete in export markets, as well as foster the economy's diversification trust. The facility is administered by Exportity and assists SMEs in eight designated sectors. So the sectors are identified here manufacturing, agriculture and agro-processing, financial services, maritime, creative, software, fish and fish processing, and aviation services. Now, and this seminar is exclusively for manufacturing, so I'm only going to focus on manufacturing. The other areas, the, the other, um, the, the, the funding is for specific initiatives. So with respect to manufacturing, right, manufacturers can access 50% of the cost of new machinery and equipment up to $250,000. The grant does not cover working capital, land and building, and installation costs. It only covers machinery and equipment costs. In terms of the requirements for the facility, you must have your application. Well, the other application form available on the Ministry of Trade and Industries website. You download the application form and you, you fill out the application form. You must have a business plan. You must have audited financial statements for two years or managerial accounts for at least two years for the smaller type businesses. You must have documented evidence of the cost of the capital, of the capital requirements as the cost of the machinery and equipment. You must have your business registration documents, your tax clearance certificate and your VAT clearance certificate showing that you do not owe the government any taxes. You must have documentary evidence confirming your company's ability to pay 50% of the cost of machinery and equipment. And you must also obtain a police certificate of character. Now, I know I moved ahead a little, a little quickly, but when we speak about SMEs, the, we, for a small company, a small company, um, according to the government's policy, is one where the annual turnover is less than $8 million, TT dollars and a medium is between eight to 15 million TT dollars in annual turnover. Anything above $15 million in annual turnover, you consider large. The application process for the grant fund facility, you must complete the application form, submit the application form and the supporting documents to the Ministry of Trade and Industry. An officer will at the Ministry of Trade and Industry will contact you. The, to conduct a site visit, the proposal, a proposal with, with um, sorry, an evaluation of your proposal will be, will be done and sent to the evaluating committee for consideration. The evaluating committee is chaired by the Ministry of Trade and Industry. 
and there are representatives from Exim Bank, the Ministry of Finance, as well as Export TT. Now, once the company is approved, so once the evaluating committee agrees, it is then sent to the Minister, the Minister of Trade and Industry for approval. Once approval is granted, official notification of the approval is sent to Export, Export TT and the applicant. Export TT then signs a grant agreement with the applicant and Export TT pays directly to the supplier. As I mentioned, it's for machinery and equipment, so Export TT will pay their 50% directly to the supplier. It will not be paid to the individual company. Since the establishment of this facility in 2017, you would have had about 17 companies that were approved for funding, and funding would have totaled in excess of $3 million. The grant assisted companies in printing and publishing, cocoa processing, including the manufacture of chocolates, food and agro processing, the manufacture of um, packaging materials, fish processing, textile and garment manufacturing, the manufacturing of beauty and personal skin gear products, as well as the manufacture of chemical products, including cleaning items. So it's an initiative that has really been quite successful um, in, and it's something that manufacturers have been taking advantage of. So building on the success from the Grand Fund facility, the Ministry of Trade and Industry realized that the steel pan industry needed specific attention. And as such, in January 2020, the government launched the steel pan manufacturing grant. The steel pan um, manufacturing grant fund facility, right, is for the acquisition of new machinery, equipment, software, tools, raw materials, and training by local steel pan manufacturers. Through the facility, successful local applicants can access individual grants up to a maximum of $250,000 per tranche, not exceeding $1 million per entity. The objective of the facility is to assist the steel pan manufacturers in new product development and innovation and in improving process and cost efficiency, thereby increasing their export competitiveness. The facility is also open to tuners insofar as they are part of the manufacturing process. The steel pan manufacturing grant is available to sole proprietors, partnership companies, um, wholly owned by Trinidad and Tobago nationals and registered and operating in Trinidad and Tobago. The applications for funding under the grant fund facility are to under the steel pan grant fund facility, sorry, are to include but are not limited to the application form, documented evidence of the cost of new machinery, equipment, um, software, tools, raw materials, and training, a business plan by the company, management account for the previous two years of operation, the business registration documents where necessary, the tax clearance certificate, that is the tax clearance and VAT clearance certificate. The applicant um, must submit, sorry, the application must be submitted to the Ministry of Trade and Industry Business Development Directorate. An officer will review the application and conduct a site visit. The completed application with all the supporting documents are sent to the evaluation committee. Sorry, the evaluation committee will conduct the site visit, not, not, not the officer. The evaluation committee is, is chaired by the MIC Institute of Technology. Um, the evaluation committee submits the final report to the Ministry of Trade and Industry. The minister gives the approval or non-approval. Official not notification of the approval or non-approval of, of the application is, is sent to the, to the MIC. Um, if approval is granted, a grant agreement between the successful applicant and the MIC is administered, and the MIC plays directly to the supplier. So in the steel pan manufacturing grant, the major difference is, the, is that the MIC, Institute of Technology, is really the administering agency and not export TT. Additionally, it's specific to the steel pan industry and companies can access up to $1 million in tranches of 250,000. Census inception, um, which would have been in January, 2020, I'm advised that the steel pan manufacturing grant has dispersed um, over half a million dollars. And this would have been to three successful companies. There are a few companies that are still being processed at the Ministry of Trade and Industry, and I'm sure those will may be approved quite soon. Um, in order to enhance the export competitiveness of companies, Export TT has a what is known as a co-financing um, program 
The co-financing program provides financial support for export-related activities for companies to enter new markets or expand within existing markets. A company can receive financial support from ExportTT for a portion of its pre-approved expenses under this facility. The service is meant to treat with business constraints related to accessing export markets. The grant allows companies to access up to 50% of the total cost of the project up to a maximum of 35,000 per company per year. Now, the Minister of Trade and Industry in the budget debate in the Senate on Friday announced that this program is being expanded, right? And the co-financing activities will assist in intellectual property registration in overseas market, product testing, shipping of samples in new market, translation of export-related documents, labor design modification, and attendance at the, at the trade show, which would include virtual trade missions. So this is something that ExportTT will be doing over the, um, the next couple of months or so, right? To introduce a kind of revised co-financing program that will be more specific, more targeted, more focused to developing the export potential of companies. Applicants must be a full, in applying for co-financing, you must be a firm, you know, that is, you must be a sole proprietor, a partnership or a company registered in Trinidad and Tobago. You must be trading for at least one year. You must be exporting to can dem or demonstrate the potential to export goods and services. All projects are subject to approval by an evaluation committee that is chaired by um, export. Application for co-financing, um, the, the process is available on ExportTT's website, right? And there's a link that you click on and it takes you directly to the application. ExportTT also assists manufacturers in meeting international standards. So currently they provide financial assistance for technical support um, and it, it assists with the implementation of good manufacturing practice, as hazard analysis and critical control points, International Organization of Standardization, Food Safety Modernization Act, um, safety, quality foods, third party, et cetera, right? Currently, companies can access up to 50% of the total cost up to 100,000 on a reimbursable basis. Um, I must mention that the Honorable Minister of Trade and Industry also announced in the Senate that this program is currently being expanded Right, and it will include SMEs and large firms to achieve international certification in a range of applicable food and beverage and other product standards, so as to boost the production of non-energy goods, meet the recognized quality and safety standards of international franchises, and provide for import substitution and export expansion. So, um, ExportTT will be working in terms of expanding the offerings under, under this in, in the forthcoming fiscal year as well. The criteria and the requirements are the same as that of co-financing. You go to ExportTT's website and you will see the criteria is there as well as how the application process. Like I said, it's just a link that you click on and it will take you directly to the application. Tax allowances. Section 10 one of the Income Tax Act provides that in computing the income of any person from any source for the purpose of asserting the chargeable income of a person for that year, there shall be allowed all outgoing and expenses wholly and exclusively incurred during the year of income by that person in the production of the income from that source. Section 19 of the Corporation Tax Act incorporates certain sections of the Income Tax Act and hence the following exemption allowances are made available to companies. So before I go to the allowances, all this really means is that as a manufacturing company or as a company in Trinidad and Tobago, you are allowed certain deductions um, in computing your taxable amount to be paid. So manufacturers, and these are the ones that I listed that manufacturers normally benefit from and you know, they, they, it, it, it kind of some, in some instances exclusive to them, in others, it's, it's across the board for other companies. There's a promotional expense allowance of 150%, um, and that is for the promotion of your good or service in a foreign market, that is a market outside of CARICOM, so it covers such things as advertising, marketing, right? 
is that training allowance of 150% for the training of, of employees if, if manufacturers pay for employees to be trained in a certain system, certain health and safety procedures or whatnot. It's a write-off that they are allowed. The capital expense allowance on plant and equipment is a major allowance. It's 90% initial depreciation allowance in your first year of acquisition. There's a scholarship sponsorship of 100%. Audiovisual and video production sponsorship of 150%, sports and sportsman sponsorship of 100%, promotion of the fashion industry of 150%, and the artistic work sponsorship of 100%. Now, there are caps on some of these allowances, and the Minister of Finance did announce that these allowances, he, he has increased the cap, right? So I'll come to that a little later on when I go through the budget initiatives. Moving ahead, there are special programs um, that are administered by the various agencies. And well, these are not financial incentives, it, it, it is um, some level of support. It offers some level of support for the manufacturing industry. Um, and it at very little, very minimal cost to the manufacturers. InvestCT provides investor advisory services. And this is, um, this is a major initiative because it, 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 it provides information on manufacturing opportunities as well as available real estate, um, government incentives. So the investor advisory service is, is really something that manufacturers should try to take advantage of. Once you have a project and you've decided you've taken that investment decision that you're going to invest in Trinidad and Tobago, um, they could also assist you with obtaining your regulatory approvals um, in terms of I direct you to write, directing you to the right persons, fast tracking your approvals and whatnot. Investity also has an important policy advocacy role. So quite often, you know, they would lobby government agencies or ministries. Um, if they think that something needs to change, you know, because the policy is not meeting its intended target, right? And you know, the the information is really fed from the clients, that is the manufacturers and the investors in Trinidad and Tobago. Export does quite a lot of export training programs in Trinidad and Tobago. And I would have looked at their website and as of recently, they had um, quite a few programs. One on developing an export plan, export marketing, proposal writing for grant funding, generating export leads, selecting agents and distributors, and a 30 minute sales pitch. Now, all these programs are heavily subsidized. It's at very little cost. In some instances, they don't even charge for the programs. But it's something that manufacturers can take advantage of, especially those that are looking to enter into foreign markets. ExportDT also assists with the identification of export opportunities. And this is very important based upon your product. They are able to tell you which market is importing that product and at what price. They could also assist you with, with um, matching you with a distributor in that market. So if you're not having a conversation with Export ET, you need to start having one with Export ET. The certificate of origin is something that is administered by Export ET. And a certificate of origin is a document used by an exporter declaring that the goods being exported are of a certain origin and qualifies for preferential treatment or duty-free access in accordance with the relevant rules of origin. This is a criteria that is usually established under a trade agreement that determines whether a good or service will qualify for any treatment when traded. So Trinidad and Tobago currently has several trade agreements through the CARICOM. We've also negotiated at the, at the, um, at the national level, right, a partial scope with Panama. Um, and we, based upon the agreements that we have, we have access to a market of well over 900 million persons, right? So within CARICOM, once your product is certified as being of Trinidad and Tobago origin, you can export duty-free to any CARICOM member state, right? That's Antigua, Bermuda, Barbados, Belize, Dominica, Grenada, Guyana, Jamaica, Montserrat, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia, Suriname. Through CARICOM, you could export to the Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, Venezuela, Colombia, Cuba, and the European Union. We, like I said, we also have the partial scope with Panama, and Trinidad and Tobago goods also go duty-free into the US under the Caribbean Basin Initiative. And we also go duty-free into Canada on the, under the Caribbean Agreement. Just last week, the Minister of Trade and Industry would have signed a, negotiating, a negotiation framework agreement um, for the negotiation of a trade agreement, a partial scope trade agreement with Chile. 
uh, Chile has a market of over 19 million persons. So it's something that will substantially, a trade agreement with Chile is something that will substantially benefit the manufacturers in Trinidad and Tobago. Um, and like I said, Export ET has all these other programs to help you with the certification and whatnot to get your product up to standard, to get it to the export market, and they also provide the trade. Another agency that is very important and provides services for manufacturers is the Exim Bank of Trinidad and Tobago. Exim provides export financing with a core focus on developing the export potential of companies. There are quite a few um, services that they provide. They provide raw material financing, a short-term loan, a direct financing facility to assist for the payment for, of inventory. They also assist with factoring and discounting, short-term financing to export manufacturers, distributors, and service providers, where the companies can access loan financing between 85 and 95% of the export sale invoice value, which is repaid by the buyer from the proceeds assigned to Exim Bank. They have asset financing. The asset financing is a facility that assists manufacturers seeking to upgrade plant and equipment to improve competitiveness. And they have an X loan. The X loan is a loan to purchase equipment in TT dollars and repay it in TT dollars. Increasing exports, because again, the emphasis here is on exports. Increasing exports will allow the company to reduce, to pay a lower interest rate, right? And of course, the, more, the most sought after facility at the Exim Bank is the Forex facility. The, the, the Forex facility allows manufacturers who meet the eligibility criteria to acquire foreign exchange from the Exim Bank. Small, medium, and established exporters whose annual revenue does not exceed 100 million um, can access the facility. The Exim Bank considers manufacturers with low level of export production, a viable export plan, and confirmed orders. They also look at small, medium, and large enterprises which have a strong financial plan, current cash flow, and demonstrate good management with the history of exports. Right? So Exim Bank, like I said, is another, um, another agency that offers a lot of services to manufacturers. Um, and I will provide the contact information for all these agencies um, at the end of the session. I'll provide email address for all these agencies, specific persons in these agencies that will be able to assist manufacturers. ETEC, Evolving Technologies and Enterprise Development Company Limited is a agency under the Ministry of Trade and Industry that has the remit for the development of industrial parks. Currently, you have about 22 industrial parks throughout Trinidad and Tobago. And in the last um, two, two years or so, right, they would have, um, the, well, the government constructed the Maruga Rukasen Park, and that was officially opened earlier this year, in July of this year. The Phoenix Park Industrial Estate also started um, construction this year, right? Um, and just to provide a little detail, the uh, the the rates that is the rates that you pay to occupy, whether it be a factory shell or landlots, is heavily subsidized. It is below market rates, and this is exclusively to encourage manufacturers to operate within an approved space. So the Muruga Rupilasin Park includes all major utilities, electricities, um, telephone, internet, water, wastewater treatment, access to road for each lot. The, landlord, the landlords are offered with ready connections to all utilities with factory shells. Um, when the facility was open in July of this year, there were six landlords available and five factory shells. You would have heard the minister announce in the budget presentation that you had investors that were interested and they started you know, occupying the spaces and stuff like that. So currently you have three and a half buildings available and you have three land flights available. The factory shell monthly rental rate is a dollar and 75 cents TT dollars per square foot, but the landlord have a premium of 17,300 plus watt and an annual rent of 16,000 plus watt. Just going to show a little video here of the Maruga Rutasin Park just so that you get a better idea of what it is and um, its facilities. Thank you. 
Okay, so the video that I just showed was provided by InvestCT, and I'm going to show another video in a short bit that was also provided by InvestCT. Um, InvestCT is responsible for the tenanting of the industrial parks, and should you wish to, to have space at the Maruga Processing Park, you can have a conversation with InvestCT, and I will provide that contact information shortly. The second um, industrial estate that I mentioned um, that was recently launched was the, the Phoenix Park Industrial Estate. Now, the Phoenix Park Industrial Estate um, is a modernized industrial park with advanced technological infrastructure. Um, it is situated on 144 acres in Point Lisas. The park is 10 minutes away from the country's second largest port, the port of Point Lisas, right? When completed, it will have 76 leasable lots for light industrial activity, that is manufacturing activity, two leasable lots for commercial activity, five factory shells. Um, the factory shell cost currently is at US 75 cents per square foot per month, and the land lot is at US 15,800 per acre per annum. The infrastructure and services provided for and to each lot will include underground electrical and telecommunication infrastructure leading to each lot, a portable water supply, natural gas supply to 41 lots, LED street lights, wastewater treatment plan, plant, boundary high security fencing, um, covered drains with adequate retention ponds. This is what the park will look like once it's completed. As you can see, it has a well-connected road network Right, for easy access in and out of the industrial park. There the are factory shells to be built and there will also be um, land lots available. So let me just show a little video again. Okay, so um, just I've, I've been prompted that I'm running a little late because it's 10.25, so I'm going to just go through the others um, quite quickly. Um, in terms of applying for space at the industrial estates, you make an application to ETEC and evaluation is done. Um, you're given an offer letter once the once evolving technologies and enterprise development company um, agrees, right? Um, you're required to submit a business proposal with your business incorporation documents that includes your certificate of incorporation, your certificate of continuance, articles of incorporation, company laws, um, list of directors, and whatnot. Right? Also, your financial statements are required. Right? Um, so, like I said, InvestCT is really responsible for tenants in the park, and they will walk you through that process. I would identify the officer a little later today that will assist you with that. Um, moving along to the new measures that were introduced in the budget, um, the Minister of Finance on October 5th announced quite a few measures um, that would assist um, manufacturing in Trinidad and Tobago. Right, um, um, principal among these, he said that small and medium-sized enterprise that list on the junior stock exchange will benefit from certain tax breaks. These tax breaks are expected to take place from January 1st, 2021. Currently, by listing on the stock exchange, an SME that lists on the junior, junior stock exchange, they pay a corporation tax rate of 10% for, for the first five years, and the applicable corporation tax rate, which is 30% thereafter. What the minister is, propose, is proposing to do, he is proposing to give a full tax holiday for the first five years, and for you to pay 50% for the other five years. So it's a major initiative to get persons to list on the stock exchange. I know the details of this is still being worked out. 
And I'm certain that a lot more information will become available in Trinidad because Stock Exchange will put it on their website in terms of how you go about listing and what type of companies they're looking for and stuff like that. So the, the details of this initiative is, is still being fine-tuned, but it's obviously going to be launched from January 1st, 2021. So it's something that you can look forward to. The minister also announced an increase in the rate of the wear and tear allowance on plant and equipment from 25% to 50% with effect from January 1st, 2021. And this is in addition to the initial depreciation allowance of 90% currently enjoyed by manufacturers. Um, the minister also announced the removal of value added tax on the importation of building materials to be used exclusively in connection with commercial and industrial development projects, which start on or before December 31st, 2022. So the emphasis here is on industrial development projects. So businesses or manufacturers that are looking to expand um, or whether or not you're now looking to construct your factory, you can, once you start before December 31st, 2022, you can benefit from exemption from VAT on your construction materials to construct your factory. The, I, I mentioned the tax allowances before and what the minister also announced that he was gonna do for, with respect from January 1st, was to increase the cap on the tax allowances from six million to twelve million dollars. So, um, and this is the cap on the local fashion industry, the audio, the visual and video production, um, local education, entertainment, local production companies. Right. So that will be increased from six million to twelve million dollars. That is the cap. As part of its push for full digitalization of the Trinidad and Tobago economy and government services, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, I'm sorry, tax allowances of 150%. He introduced the minister announced a new tax allowance of 150%, capped at 3 million in respect of the following businesses which invest in tech startup and new tech startup businesses, businesses which engage in technology solution and digitalization, and businesses which create employment in the technology industry, particularly for young people. These measures will take effect from January 1st, 2021. As promised, um, this, this is the contact information for the various agencies. Invest City Limited, the investment facilitation officer that will deal with um, your questions on the industrial park, the tenanting of the industrial park, or the services that they can provide to you is Ms. Tamara Nangu. And her email address is tamara.nangu at investtt.co.tt. The contact person at Export TT, which could assist you with the co-financing, the financing to meet international standards, the certificate of origin, all the, all the initiatives under the Export TT is Mr. Christine Maraj. And Mr. Christine Maraj, um, email address is cmaharaj at exporttt.co.tt. Um, the contact person at Exim Bank is Mr. Sheldon Thomas. He's a manager at the, at the bank and his email address is there. The contact at ETEC is Ms. Waynette Balcon. She's one of the land, the land officers. Her email address is listed and I'm the contact at the Ministry of Trade and Industry. So we're now at the 10 30 point exact. I don't know if the TTMA would allow me to take a few questions because I saw that there were quite a few that were coming in. Virish, please feel free to take a few questions. Thanks. Okay. Thank you, Christian. All right. So I'm just, I'm just looking at the chat here. And if, if I don't respond to your question right now, um, once you provide your information, your contact information, the, it will be provided. All right. So I asked companies to kind of list, but I, I know a lot of companies came on late, but I was kind of hoping that we would know who the companies are that, that were asking the AMI questions. Um, the first question, which is from VP Packaging, where can I find out the packaging for the poultry and meat industry have duty concessions? Um, so that information would reside with the Ministry of Trade and Industry. Um, and you can contact me thereafter via the email address that I just provided. All right, I'm gonna... Let me just go back to the email address for everyone, right? So you can send me an email, right? And we will speak offline on that. Right, uh, look in here. Um, somebody is asking, can I get a copy of this presentation and record it? So the TTMA is responsible for the, um, the presentation as well as the recording. 
and the TTMA will provide the, um, the presentation thereafter to everyone, right? Um, not seeing anything else here, right? Uh, I think Roshana would have been um, responding to persons offline. Uh, Oh, I wish to acknowledge that I'm now being told that the minister would have joined us um, during the presentation. So I wish to acknowledge the presence of Senator the Honorable Ola Gopiskun that um, would have joined us during the, um, the presentation. Um, I hope that we represented everything that the ministry is doing adequately. And we would have spoken about a lot of initiatives. So I'm, I'm not seeing any other questions listed so, Christian, I think we could probably um, we could probably end at this point, All right? British, I'm seeing that the minister's hand is raised. I'm not sure if she'd like to say something. No, um, yeah. Can you hear me? I'm hearing you loud and clear on a roll. Good morning, pleasant okay. morning to you. Right. Thank you, Christian. Thank you, and and thank you, Vidish. I think this presentation went very well. What we so I want the TTMA to really package this for us, or or if not, um allow us to circulate this and um, and pass it on to the media as well. I think it's very helpful um, to those who may not have tuned in. So TTMA, could you please look at that? Let's find a way. And when we, of course, pack it Let me up. intervene. Uh, for sure, yes, it will be provided to you all so you all can do the needful. right -o. Okay, great. Wonderful. Thank you. Well done. Thank you, Minister. So if there are no further questions, um, I, we, we've gone a little beyond the, our mark. So we'll end today's session. Um, the email addresses are provided. I hope that everybody had an opportunity to take down the email addresses. And um, please engage these agencies. They are here to assist you. And they are here to assist you in growing your business. And from the Ministry of Trade and Industries um, side, I am the contact person. My email address is there. Feel free to reach out to me at any time for any information, um, as well as if you have any project that you, you're seeking to expand on or any new investment that you're looking to do. All right, um, yeah, and just continue to keep the dialogue going. Thank you all for your attention this morning.